Today we're going to answer the burning question. Is Apex really pay to win? Today I'll be breaking down just how much of an advantage that you can get by spreading your wallet wide open and going all out. Starting with the pay to win weapon skins. For the R99 we have the Zero Point and the Outlands Avalanche skins. The Zero Point was available in the Season 4 Battle Pass and the Outlands Avalanche is just as good but it's a normal legendary skin other than this little pipe on the side. But if you think that's good, check out Cutting Edge and Revolutionary which is the Season 7 reactive skins. They have the same clean iron sight as featured in the Outlands Avalanche or the Zero Point, but it's a little bit sleeker with some cool non-distracting effects to boot. For the flatline we used to have the heatsink skin, but as you might know this was recently changed with the introduction of the new recolor. However, there are still some flatline skins that push the envelope when it comes to better iron sights. For example, we have the clenched fist, which is a lot more cleaner visually, with slightly better iron sights than a default flatline skin. The same goes for the teal zeal. Also, if you buy the Champions Edition of the game, you can get the Slayer's Lancer, which also has some pretty clean iron sights. As for the Wingman, we have the Death Ray and the Merciless Wing. These are both normal legendary skins and can be bought at any time of the day, and it will give you an infinitely cleaner sight than the default Wingman skin. Not only is it easy to see what you're shooting at, but your screen doesn't get completely blocked by every shot that you make. Moving on to the Alternator, we have the LED Res and the Galvanizer, and they are both pretty great. They don't take up too much space visually with clutter, and they're just overall really clean, with a good contrast to help you focus better. The Peacekeeper is atrociously bad without a skin, and that is just that much improved if you run the Old Blue or the Lone Star or, well, one of the many recolors. The Spitfire has terrible iron sights as is, so anything is really an improvement. Continuum and Heavy Construct adds a little bit of a larger piece to the back side of your iron sight, giving you a slightly clearer sight picture, which helps with target acquisition. The G7 Scout has some of the worst iron sights in the game for all weapons, which does make sense because it is a sniper or marksman rifle, and out of all of the different legendaries, there wasn't really any pay to win skin. However, one limited edition skin stands out from the rest and that's the attrition skin. It came out in the fight night collection event and has the best iron sights probably in the game with a transparent iron sight to reduce your visual clutter by an incredible amount. The Prowler doesn't have too much of a difference between the skins, but you can reduce the visual clutter a lot by getting the dark fright skin. This removes the screw from the iron sight, making the gun feel a lot less clunkier. The same applies for a longbow's McFly skin and the longhorn. As for the 30 you you want to look out for the Wild West and the Bullet Train skins. The Sentinel can add so much flair to a fight, especially when you're running with an iron sight, so you definitely want to have as much of a clean sight picture as possible, right? For that, we have the Biomechanics and the Golden Spine skins. The L-Stars Beyond the Wheel has the best iron sights for any l star skin and was available in the Raiders Collection event. It's extremely clean with a huge reduction on visual clutter all around the gun, and the sight itself is also a lot more cleaner, giving you an easier time with tracking your targets. A lot of these skins are the same model, but with different colors and there are recolors of these skins as well that occasionally drop in the store but the difference between these recolors don't actually add any competitive advantage and just more flair so we're not going to list all of them keep in mind though that some skins while looking good are really more in the way than they help and as such could be dubbed pay to lose if you have any of these skins you should definitely switch them because believe it or not they're making your aim a lot worse great examples of these are managed reactive skins that you get for maxing out the battle pass most Notably, we have the R301 skin, which blocks your whole screen before you even start getting a kill in the first place, not to mention once the animation pops off, followed by the reactive Peacekeeper, which somehow takes up more space than the default Peacekeeper skin or most legendary ones, with special mention to the Havoc and the Devotion reactive skins. And while they aren't insanely paid to lose, they're just kind of distracting and take up a little bit more visual space than their default counterparts. Next up is the Guardian of Atlantis EVA 8 skin. The wings going out the sides completely block your view and are incredibly distracting when aiming down sights. And it's actually so bad that they'll get in the way, even if you're hip firing. Of course, we have the triple takes Tame Beast, which has all of these tentacles come out of the sides and blocking most of your screen, just like with the EVA 8 skin. We have the Alternator Haymaker skin, which adds a huge peel of hay and cloth on top of your alternator, making the base model a lot larger. And it actually blocks your iron sight a little bit. We also have the Wingman Dead Heat or Thermal Rise. Both of these skins are already large and clunky. And not only that, they block so much of your view in between every shot. Flatline has the Chain Beast and the Hazard Pay. Both of these skins add a lot of unnecessary flair to the gun, which just takes up way too much space for my liking. If you're using the Hemlock, look out for the Lost Queen, the Glorious One, and the Notorious One, as all of these skins have these huge distracting plates on the front. As for the Prowler, I've recently said that Dark Realm and Lightworker are good skins, as Iron Sight is a little bit cleaner, but these prods on the sides are just too damn distracting. For the R99, avoid a Spiked Alchemist or the Problem Solver skin, 
weapons. These are somehow worse than the default R99, as it features the same round iron sight at the front, but it also has these huge distracting spikes all over the skin. The Spitfire has the Demon Claw skin, which adds a lot of visual clutter to the front. I'd argue that the Kraber's Lifesaver and Snowpiercer are unnecessarily large as well, but ultimately it doesn't really matter, as you don't really have iron sights on the Kraber in the first place. As for the Mastiff, avoid pest control and warp zone at all costs. These skins look good, but feature a massive screen on the left side that ends up taking a lot of space, and it's just really, really distracting. Another Peacekeeper pay to lose skin is a PAL 9000 and the Demolisher skins that somehow make the Peacekeeper a lot larger than the default skin, adding this huge pipe in front of your sight and some additional details. As a rule of thumb, any skins that add anything extra to the look of your skin will block your view and in turn be a pay to lose skin. Now, normally we could end the video here, but there are actually more pay to win items in Apex than just the weapons. For example, the finishers, Vantages, How Dare You, Ashes, Sight Unseen, Bangalore's Close Quarters Combat Finisher that you get with her $300 prestige skin, both of Bloodhound's Clean Kill and With Honor, Mirage's Default and Strike a Pose, Maggie's Default and Renewed Hostility, all will turn the enemy around at the start of the animation, meaning that you can start a finisher, cancel it, and then instantly shoot them to finish them without giving them a chance to turn around and raise their Nocturne shield in time. Not only that, but finishers vary in animation time, meaning you can pull off a finisher faster than someone playing the same legend if you're using a different finisher than they are. Here's a list with most of all the finisher timings. Not only that, but there's a wide variety of dive animations that make you either more difficult to hit to outright impossible. And going through these made me realize we're not talking about dive animations enough, like not nearly enough. For example, just look at Gibraltar Surf Up. It makes you ride your shield like a surfboard, just weaving through the air. It, it's not really that bad, but if you look at Lifeline's windmill, it makes you bust out a breakdance, making you near impossible to hit. Pathfinder's Raven Rampage makes you fly, spin around, and fly around a bunch, and his other skydive emote, Swing in a Miss, ironic name by the way, lets you do a full grapple animation midair, and it makes you very, very difficult to hit. Raves perpetual motion allows you to just go between portals, just look at this, and it makes you completely impossible to hit. And her skydive animation, Think Fast, again, one of these names, makes her fly around a lot, making her even more difficult to hit. Mirage's It Takes Two summons a clone! It summons a clone and it makes them both twirl around! How are you supposed to hit this? Revenant's Dodging Death makes him swirl around in the air, just making it harder to track. Rampart's Perpetual Motion makes you ride your amplified wall as a surfboard and make and actually make mid-air flips, and Spray and Pray makes you zigzag mid-air. Seer Soul Invictus also makes him twirl around mid-air. So if you guys didn't know this, the reason Respawn nerfed the Heatsink skin, as it was very pay to win before, was, and let me quote them directly, competitive integrity. But in the same patch, they added this Loba dive animation into the game, and this has to be the worst one out of all of them by far. This guy dive animation has Loba not only moving around a lot, it also has her teleport to her bracelet several times over and over. And not only that, it also has Loba juking out the enemy by moving one way, only to teleport right back to the bracelet as well. Competitive integrity. Really? There's some other animations that allow you to dodge bullets, but I'm keeping it to the ones that don't just make you do a cool animation, but also severely changes the course of your fall for a long period of time, or make you, well, impossible to hit. I also wanted to take a second and show you guys a few items that no longer are pay to win, but were at one point in time, and no, I'm not talking about the flatline that we mentioned it many times now. We're talking about the items that give you a massive advantage due to bugs in the game. When it was released, Rave's Marble Goddess skin had the completely wrong hitbox, meaning that you could shoot her and the game would register it as a hit, giving you a sound and visual effect indicating that you hit her, but she didn't actually take damage, making players think that they constantly kept no-regging her. Loba's newest heirloom currently has this bug where if you crouch and strafe around, the Loba bottle will just twirl around, absolutely flying all over the place, making her very impossible to hit. And who can forget the Bangalore Mill spec skins, which have to running around for a certain distance would turn you completely invisible, only showing your guns floating around. And if you don't want to pay money for your skins or you just get an heirloom for free, check out the video on the screen for a full guide outlining the fastest way that you can get an heirloom for free. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow.